me guys. So it's just outside of the wind turbine there. Just got it back up last night. Today's the first wind on it. See it's resting. See I've switched to the lithium batteries. I got fucking like 26 kilowatt hours of uh, lipos. I've got a bunch more solar here. I just got some temporary ones around up running into this classic here for now too. But everything's in absorb now. I just want to show this because the wind turbine is still going out there. It's just diverting the power to the dump load here now. See, there's the SSR for it, three phase. I don't charge my lithiums any more than 27.5 volts for a 24 volt bank. I've got these big testers here. I've done a lot of fucking testing with these and I've got three of these and I had another smaller one. With three laptops just to fucking test batteries with three. So I've done a lot of testing with them. I know where to stop charging them at. 27.5 is about where I want to be. You see it's turned on the fan on the dump load. diverting all its power now so it made 600 watts it's, I think it's about fucking 3 or 330 or so and it's only started to get we need about noon that's a 19 kilometer an hour wind today average so, yeah this is the spring I just took out yesterday out of that turbine and it is shorted all three of them are shorted sometimes I'll show I'll make a video on it later about this slip ring I have to I'll take it apart and, but yeah if I connect the leads on it I just shake this around pull it up and down a little bit and it'll short right out Every every leg shorts opponents to each other. So that's definitely not too good. I see insides of them. That's what they look like. But I'm curious to see why it's shorting out. Because it, the only time I really seen any amps was when it was on its dump load. To make 60 amps on the charge controller was only needing 10 through a year so I'll make a video on that later but yeah fully charged It's the charge controller there. It's putting most of the power out. See all I had to do is bang on there and the display will come on. Cause it's just sensitive like that. It's touch sensitive they say. But all you gotta do is bang it and it comes on. I like that charge controller. It works really good. And I can change the settings from if I'm at work and I see the batteries that are out of lock, I can fucking change it anytime I want. I can't do that with these classics. That's the only one I can change. I like that one has about 1200 watts of solar on that one. These are good too, in case you 
do find yourself overvolting. This can be like a final backup. It's nice in the winter to use this because then it can dump the heat into these. This one gets used quite a bit. This is my second dump load for my wind turbine. If this one can't keep up, this will kick in with that. And also, it's hooked up to this relay right here. And that relay can be turned on with my Wi-Fi controller on my phone. So I can turn the brake on on the wind turbine. Even in the strongest winds, when I turn these on, that prop spins like this, about this fast. That's because it has super strong magnets. And the coils are, are big. If you can't do that when you put your brake on, your blades are overpowering your stator. And you will burn all your stator if you try to put the brake on when it's like that. I've seen a video of a guy, he has his, his, well he used to have, I don't know if it's still like that or not. When he has his dump load in series with his bridge going into the charge controller. And he says that's slowing down his turbine. It's not slowing down his turbine. When he's turning his dump load on, he's diverting the power through the, the resistors. And then into his bridge rectifier. All you're doing there is making your turbine speed up. Because it's not able to put out as much current. It, that's, you're just asking to blow you up like that. You won't wreck your stator, but you'll blow your blades up. It will overspeed like that, or lose the magnets off of the rotor. The dump load works great. I've never seen these ones have to turn on yet. Every night at midnight when this one resets, it's fucking data log or whatever the fuck it's doing. I have this one programmed to turn on for like six minutes, three minutes before midnight and three minutes after midnight. It turns these resistors on, stops the wind turbine. Just as a backup, because if if that thing fucking for some reason doesn't turn on aux two, I don't need that turbine blowing that board out in the, in the, in the midnight. Yeah, all the power now that it's making won't get registered anymore. Batteries are full. It's completely getting diverted here. You can see video of how it made this. It's about a 3000 watt diversion. But yeah, I got a bunch more solar panels to put up. I'll be putting this classic up here. I've got another classic for my other wind turbine, but I don't even use it. I'll be hooking this up direct to the battery. I have all new... I have a Whizbang Junior too for this, right? For... for uh, here's a shunt for it. Whizbang Juniors in this box. So I'll be hooking that up. I'll be making new, new buzz bars. Bus bars and uh, putting that Whizbang Junior in there. Uh, the, that 
small wind turbine, it isn't even worth it to have it on a Classic. Because a Classic uses too much power in standby mode. It's just, it makes just as much, maybe even more, hooked directly to the batteries. The way it is. But I think I'm going to put this Classic right here. Where it was before. And I'm just going to keep the other one as a spare. Until I get more solar panels. I like to always have a spare of everything I have, so. It's nice like that. Keeps things going. And I've been using these inverters here. They're not too bad. I just keep spares of those. I got another one in a box. So I might do an unboxing on that. Let's see. Because I had a 3500 want one which blew a bunch of transistors out on it almost every fucking transistor in it actually and the I, that's one of the inverters I didn't open up to see how it was before I started using it and when I took it apart to see why it wasn't working the hot leg where it screwed down to the board was loose like I mean really loose so I'm sure that's what blew the fucking transistors out. But anyways, I've been rambling on. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.